Hey everyone, it's Thursday. Time for our new chocolate bean to bar maker to be profiled. Today I am going to profile Zotter chocolates out of Austria. Um, so, like I said, Zotter chocolates is out of Austria, European bean to bar maker, but that was not always the case. So, Joseph Zotter was born in Austria. He was trained as a chef and a pastry chef. He worked in those positions in the good restaurants in Austria and some in New York up until 1987. When he was 26 years old, he and his wife Ulrike decided to open their own confectionery. And for a while they were successful at it. They opened in Graz, Austria, and they eventually had four stores in operation. And he is, has always been a very creative um, person, experimenter with food. In his, in his confectionery stores, you could get things like hemp slices um, or beetle bean roulade. So he's always been very, very creative, which is a hallmark of Zotter chocolates, all their creativeness about everything that they do. Um, so the confectionery did well for a while. Uh, it, in 1992, they, he first developed his signature hand scooped bars, which are basically just bonbons in chocolate bar form. Um, they have some really delicious and interesting middles. Like I said, he's got very creative ideas when it comes to flavors. Uh, in 1984, he met the artist and partners with Andreas Grazze. Uh, Andreas has said that he was a little disillusioned by advertisements and how they um, played down to the consumer. And so all of their designs are by him, their titles, the graphics on the front of the covers, they're all unique and fun and um, very characteristic of the company now. And a lot of people actually sometimes collect the covers because they're so beautiful. So that was in 1994. In 1996, they ran into a little trouble with the confectionery store and had to declare insolvency and close three of the locations. They kept one and it came down to, could we, we could either do chocolate or we could be a confectioner. His wife voted for a confectionery because that is what they knew how to do. He said, let's do chocolate. <laughs> so that is the direction that they went in. So in 1999, they opened Zotter Chocolate Manufactory on his parents' farm in their barn. It was basically him and his wife running the whole business and their shop was in his mother's lounge. Um, in early 2000s, they started traveling to source locations where you um, source cacao beans. And um, at this time, they were still using coverture like Halbo and Valrona. But they became interested in the source of cacao beans and knowing the sources where their chocolate was coming from. So early 2000s sometime they converted all to fair trade and all to organic so all everything in their bars is organic and fair trade in 2005 he met fellow austrian bruno plunger i think is how you say it i'm not sure he worked with the austrian development agency for nicaragua to support local farmers becoming more independent so he had a lot of small cocoa farmers who were producing these beans but they had trouble selling them. So through that agency they developed the building of a co-op where they would bring all the beans and ferment the beans and dry the beans and then hopefully that would increase that did increase the quality and then they would try and sell them. But they still had a lot of difficulty buying um, finding someone to buy the beans because the big players in the game just wanted to pay commodity prices, but this is not really sustainable for small farmers and it's not really um, what the agency was working towards helping the farmers develop um, independence because those commodity prices you can't 
as a cocoa farmer, you can't live off of those prices. So they approached Joseph Zotter at his factory and asked if they were interested in buying the beans. And they were interested, but at the time they were not a bean to bar manufacturer. So they just kind of kept in touch. Eventually in 2007, Zotter con extended their factory and converted into a bean to bar factory. And by the end of 2010, they had three more stores. So they were up to four stores. And um, as per usual, then they get creative. So they have, in 2011, they opened what they call an edible zoo, which was a 60, is a 66 acre farm where um, Joseph says you get to look your food in the eye. So on this farm, there's like a petting zoo and a little theater thing. And you can, all the food that is served on the farm grows on the farm. So that opened in 2011, 2013, they opened a store in Shanghai. Um, China was just then becoming interested in chocolate. It's still a developing market for chocolate. His daughter, Julie, moved to Shanghai to work in the store. I believe she is now back in Austria, working with their father to develop new flavors. Um, 2015, was the first year that I was introduced to Zotter Chocolates at the Northwest Chocolate Festival. Um, and that was the first year they had US distribution. Um, so it was the first time you were able to get bars in the US. He has won, Joseph Zotter has won all kinds of Entrepreneur of the Year awards. And um, he, it's a family run business still. His son, Michael, manages product lines, created and manages an online tool in China that allows people to create their own chocolate, selecting from something like 90 plus flavors. Um, Julie works with her father in developing new products. Ulrike is his wife, is the manager, and their youngest daughter, Valerie, um, she's only like 15 right now. She's looks after the animals on the farm and other things. So they've been in business for in some form for 33 years. And he is very, always been very, very creative. Um, one of the bars <laughs> that are kind of creative on the edge of wacky crazy is <laughs> the raspberry, um, what do they call it? Raspberry blood. Um, it had a raspberry chocolate ganache and a few drops of blood from the animals from his edible farm and also a berry. What was the name of the berry? I can't remember the name of the berry, but it was considered typically a poisonous berry, but it was okay to eat in the amounts that was in the bar. So he's always coming up with um, just super creative ideas about chocolate and food. So I have, strangely enough, a few bars from Zotter. Well, not strange, I just happen to have a lot right now. Um, the rest of them to sale on his website. So I have a bunch of the hand scoop bars. Butter caramel is one of my favorites. Cheese, walnuts, and grape with chocolate, yum. I have a couple marzipan bars because my husband likes marzipan. And I have a yuzu citrus bar from, um, yuzu is a citrus fruit that they use in Japan. I love yuzu. So that's why I have that one. And then I have some of his Laboko single origin bars. Um, let's see, a few of the interesting ones that I have is uh, milk chocolate that actually has no sugar in it. So 70% cocoa, 30% milk, no sugar added. It's actually really interesting. I have um, this time travel bar, which um, is 16 hours of conching versus 20 hours, which is what they would normally do. So that's something fun and different. Um, this Nicaragua bar, 50% uh, milk chocolate is one of their award-winning bars. The, and. And I have the bar that I'm going to open today. This one is a ship sailed 70% Nicaragua dark chocolate. So that's the one I'm going to open today. I'm going to, we'll flip the camera around here and I'll talk a little bit more about this bar.
Okay, so the bar I'm going to taste today is their single origin Nicaragua 70% sale shipped cocoa, dark chocolate. So this one is actually a, a sailboat took the cocoa beans from Nicaragua to the port in Hamburg and then they traveled by train to the uh, factory. So it is entirely emissions free. And um, with the farmers in Nicaragua, they actually pay above world market price, commodity price for the beans. And they actually invite the farmers to come see their factory. One of the important things to get quality beans and cocoa um, growing is to give feedback to the farmers. A lot of times they've never tasted the chocolate that's made from their beans. And so it's hard for them to tell if they're doing something well. Like if you were to pick a mango off a tree, you could eat it right away and tell if it was ripe or good or whatever. You can't do that with cocoa beans because they go somewhere else to be manufactured. So um, this one is entirely emissions free and the uh, Zotter factory itself runs on clean power. So they produce the most of the power themselves through solar power and they also use electric vehicles. So he's very interested in fair trade, traceability, sustainability, um, and transparency in his chocolate making process. Okay, so let's look at the wrapper here. So we've got this beautiful artwork, ship sailed. It is a vegan bar. On the side, we've got, so I'm gonna talk about this fair trade logo here in a minute. This is not fair trade <laughs> copyright. This is their own fair trade logo. Um, I'll explain that a little bit later. This is bean to bar chocolate and it is certified organic by the USDA. Let's look on this side. So it, um, I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually two bars that are inside here. So it's a nice chocolate bar for sharing. Here's the ingredients, cocoa mass, cane sugar, and cocoa butter. And all the ingredients are 100% organic. So down here it says that it's all been um, organic, their organic control number. And actually it also says that it has fair trade content in total 100%. So that's kind of important. Um, remember that when I talk a little bit later about their fair trade practices. Let's see. Okay, made in Austria, Zotter chocolates. Okay, so here is a little tip on how to taste chocolate that comes with the bar. So eating fine chocolate is not about munching it, it is about savoring it. And it tells you the trick is to let it sit on your tongue and slowly melt. And then you will get all the aroma and the flavors that come through the chocolate. In the inside here, he's got a little bit about the saline um, of the, the cacao. He's got the conching time of 19 hours. Um, talks about the different vessels. I think they've got two vessels that they use for sailing. Here's some tasting notes on this side. That's Joseph Sauter right there. Okay, so there's the ship. This is such a fun wrapper. They have such beautiful wrappers, I could eat. people collect them. So he's got the designer here. I can't see it under the glue. Andre. Grazie, Grazie. So, uh, more about the fair trade, which I will talk about a little bit later. I'm gonna leave that other bar hooked on there. Let's open this up and take a look. So it's a nice looking bar. You can tell that it's been well tempered, nice and shiny. Good mold. Let's snap it. So it has add, added cocoa butter as most European bars do. 
that's okay. It doesn't make it good or bad, just is. It's got a nice fine grain to it. Nice shine you can see on the chocolate, so we've got a good temper. Okay, let's smell, see what we can get out of the aroma. The aroma of this I get when I just take my thumb and I warm it a little with my thumb because cocoa butter melts around body temperature. Just releasing some of the aromas. I get really fudgy chocolate, a little bit of maybe caramel or sugar, and maybe even malted sugar. Let's give it a taste and see how it tastes. Okay, so when I taste this bar, this is one of those fun bars that has a progression of flavors as you taste it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, as you, when you put it in your mouth, immediately you get this intense chocolate roasted hazelnut flavor. You get the creaminess. You get a creaminess. It's got a nice slow melt. It's a little bit cool in your mouth, which tells me it's got um, cocoa butter in there. That cocoa butter, higher cocoa butter percentage gives you that cooling flavor feeling in your mouth. And then when you get to the middle, you're halfway through the mouth. Boom! You used to get jam. Jammy, fruity notes. And that slowly fades as you get to the end. And it leaves you with a strong nutty finish. It's not bitter, it's chocolatey and nutty. So it has this progression from nutty to fruity and back to nutty again, which is really fun. I love it when bars have progressive flavors. It's a really nice bar, very smooth mouthfeel. Um, very delicious and fun to eat. So that is the Laboco Nicaragua 70% ship sailed bar. Let's, uh, I want to go back and talk to you a little bit about their fair trade label. Okay, that was a good bar. I want to have a little bit more of it. I really like the mouthfeel of that bar. So let's talk a little bit about the fair trade label. This is their new, so in 2018, 2019, they switched, sorry, let me see if I can get it to the camera, um, from certified fair trade to their own fair trade label and this is because they go above and beyond the standards of fair trade so their fair trade label moves them away from what's called mass balance fair trade so uh, sometimes when something is labeled fair trade you have 90 percent of the beans are not fair traded 10% of the beans are fair traded. They come into production. They're all mixed together to make chocolate mixed so that you can't separate them out from fair trade, not fair trade. And you get 90% of chocolate that is mixed and 10% mixed, lab not labeled fair trade, and 10% that is mixed but labeled fair trade. That's called mass balance. In their case, 100% of the beans coming into the manufacturing process are fair traded and 100% of the beans coming out are fair traded and therefore labeled with their fair trade symbolism. They are monitored by uh, what it, the WTF, no, WFTO, <laughs> World Fair Trade Organization. They don't use their symbol though because again they go above and beyond the principles of that organization. So that organization, I just want to read you the 10 principles to make sure that I get them correctly. So they have um, create opportunities for economically disadvantaged producers, transparency and responsibility, fair trade practices, fair wages, fair prices, no child or enforced labor, commitment to equality, right to unions and to combat um, discrimination, guaranteed working conditions, promotion of advanced training and competence, promotion of fair trade practices, and commitment to act in an environmentally conscious manner. So they participate all of that. They pay above what commodity prices, fair trade prices would be 
And um, also Zotter collaborates on social product, social um, projects in uh, cacao growing regions. So in Nicaragua, they have a project called Quality Not Poverty. In Colombia, they've helped farmers move from cocaine to uh, cacao. And in Peru, they have a program called Chocolate for School. So they are socially involved in social responsibility in cacao growing regions of the world. And that's just one of the reasons why I like um, the Boco and Zotter chocolates. They are not only delicious, um, fun for sharing, but they are also socially responsible, sustainable, and um, fair traded. So that is Zotter, chocolate manufacturer out of Austria. Next time we'll do a new bean to bar manufacturer, probably from the United States or Canada. Still deciding which chocolate I want to open next week. Um, if you are interested in learning more about bean to bar chocolate makers, be sure to subscribe and you will get a new video every Thursday. Thanks so much.